Good morning, this is Adrian, and uh, I'm taping this with Mark in front of the beautiful trees on a nice cool fall day here in Brattleboro, Vermont. I uh, wish you were here. But um, I wanted to give an introduction to some of the things you're going to be doing in this module on student development and learning. And the first part of this module is going to be um, a review of a variety of different psychological theories on learning and cognitive development that I think are important considerations when we look at outcomes for students that are studying abroad and, and also for international students. So I'm asking you this week to review uh, documents that we've put online on the theories of Jean Piaget, Abraham Maslow, Eric Erickson, and Albert Bandura. And briefly, I'd like to describe these theories and uh, give you a sense of what I'd like you to get out of your readings this week. Jean Piaget was one of the first people to look at cognitive development um, and try to chart a course that uh, describes how children develop in terms of their cognitive abilities all the way to adulthood. And for Piaget, this is essentially a transformation of neurological maturation. And as children get older, their brain cells mature, they're capable of different kinds of reasoning, and uh, they eventually develop their full cognitive potential. Eric Erickson, who was in a way a Freudian, uh, looked at the stages of development as a battle, if you will, between development that was positive and development that was negative. And Erickson felt that if you went through the stages of development, each stage had a particular possible outcome. And depending on the outcome of that stage, it de de determined how well you would develop in the subsequent stages. Abraham Maslow looked at development from a completely different perspective and determined that development was something that was, number one, inherent in all of us, and number two, we were attempting to develop in a way that fulfilled our deepest and innermost potentials. The fourth psychologist I'd like you to take a look at is Albert Bandura. Albert Bandura is considered the father of social learning theory. And Bandura felt that we learned most of what we learned in life from watching other people and imitating what other people did. So uh, concepts like role model come directly from his particular writings. What I would like you to do is take a look at all of these theories, familiarize yourself with them. The, the material that we put up online is very simple and straightforward and describes precisely how that particular theory works. Uh, after you've reviewed this, I'm going to give you a series of questions uh, and have you answer them in terms of how you feel development works and how it relates to students that are either studying abroad or international students coming to the United States. The second part of the assignment this week is to examine several personality variables that have been linked to mental health and to success in particular real life conditions. Uh, these include Shire and Carver's LOT or life orientation test which is a test of how optimistic an individual is. Um, you'll have to excuse me if you can't hear me over the traffic but uh, all of a sudden here in Brattleboro we have big trucks. Anyway, uh, the life orientation test is a very simple test of dispositional optimism. And I'd like you to read about this and also take the test yourselves. The second test I'm going to ask you to take is the locus of control scale, which was the seminal work of Julian Rotter. And locus of control 
deals primarily with whether or not you feel as if you have control over the events that happen in your life or they're controlled independently from outside forces, fate, for example, or predestination. And locus of control has been linked to a variety of mental health indicators because people that tend to have internal locus of control tend to see themselves more in charge and thereby their stress is reduced. The last um, scale I'm going to ask you to take is the self-efficacy scale. And this is one that was developed directly out of Bandura's work in social learning theory. And basically the self-efficacy scale deals with how you feel about, <laughs> wait, we'll wait a second here until, now we have a race car driver in the circuit. Yeah. Okay. Um, the self-efficacy scale is a measurement of how people feel about their ability to handle the situations they're confronted with. Individuals that are high in self-efficacy have a tendency to believe that they have the requisite skills to deal with the problems they face on a daily basis. People with low self-efficacy have a tendency to feel somewhat helpless when confronted with situations that are particularly unpredictable uh, in life. After you take these scales, I think you'll have an appreciation for some of the personality variables that affect students that are traveling abroad and our international students that are coming in. In the second part of this particular module, you'll be asked some questions about your perceptions of the scales as you took them and also how you might find these learning theories to be relevant in study abroad and with international students. Next week, your assignment will be to look at three different groups of individuals uh, that are based upon age criterion and look at the kinds of international activities that would be most likely to work for them given the learning theories that you've just been reviewing. And the questions will be self-evident in terms of what I would expect you to understand from the learning theories and how you might apply this to the groups that are involved in international education. As always, if you have any questions, please email me. And if there are other things that you would like to discuss, we can also make arrangements for a phone call. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, we'll talk soon.